Ever since that video came up, I've been on the receiving end of straight up anti-Jewish racism. And here's the kicker, I'm not even Jewish. I wanted to make this video to discuss two things. First of all is the anti-Semitism that I've been personally experiencing. I'm gonna read you some of my hate mail and clear up a few misconceptions that I keep seeing in the comments. Secondly, we need to talk about what anti-Semitism really is because that term can get tossed around so loosely that it starts to lose its meaning. So we'll look at that too. Let's jump in. A few days ago, a short promo video for my new book was launched and it started getting all kinds of nasty comments. Now, mind you, this is just a 90 second teaser video about the book. So all these comments aren't from people who have read the book and know what I have to say. They're just responding to the, to the headline of the video, the title of the video, which is Christian author pledges 100% of book profits to fight anti-Semitism. That's it. So check out these comments. You have betrayed your own for money. You are a person of no moral fiber. <laughs> Third-rate academic getting paid to write propaganda, then pretending it's charity by donating the profit, which is a fraction of what you got paid. Kvetch harder, Shlomoberg. <laughs> Shlomoberg. Let's see if we can't unlike this usurer into oblivion. R.L. Solberg, author, theologian, liar, son of his father, the devil. <laughs> nice try, Shlomo. Yeah, and this guy, Chris... Topher, Christopher, simply posted an icon of a big nose. Classy. This guy is what they call a crypto Jew. I had to look that one up. I had no idea what that meant. Quit trying to taint European belief with your poison. You can fool most of the goyim, which means Gentiles, but y'all ain't fooling us all. <laughs> Solberg says he's not a Jew. I get that a lot, actually. People assume that, that I'm Jewish and that my last name, Solberg, is Jewish. So let me set the record straight. First of all, I'm not Jewish. God made me a Gentile. And second of all, the name Solberg isn't a Jewish name, it's a Norwegian name, and it means something like Sun Mountain. So Solberg is the surname that I proudly accepted when I was 10 years old, when my stepfather adopted me. So for the first 10 years of my life, my name was Dorian Robert Boyle II. That's right, I was born into an Irish family, a black Irish family. And then my stepfather adopted me when I was 10 and I took the name Robert Luke Solberg. So I'm not Jewish. If you wanna get technical, I'm an English, French, German, Norwegian, Swedish, Irish, Scottish, Slavic, Russian, American. And I'd appreciate it if you'd address me as such. What's interesting about these comments is that some of them are so nasty that YouTube is automatically deleting them. At least that I assume that's what's happening because I get a notification and, and the first few words of the message and when I click on it, it's gone. So and I'll typically, I'll delete these kinds of messages because all they are is kind of mindless hatred, name calling and things like that. And they just don't move the conversation forward. However, in this case, I'm gonna leave them up because they really help to prove the need for my book. They validate two things. First of all, they validate that anti-Semitism is real. The hatred of the Jewish people is sometimes gets so great that it spills over onto non-Jewish people like me just because we're preaching love for the Jewish people. And secondly, and sadly, it validates that some of this hatred is coming from Christians and that has to stop. You know, these nasty comments, they make me doubly glad that I'm donating all the profit from this book to fight anti-Semitism. Because for the life of me, I can't find any way to reconcile the teachings of Jesus and the New Testament authors with a hatred for the Jewish people. It just doesn't add up. Racism is real and it's a terrible thing. But here's the problem. These terms like racism or anti-Semitism are getting thrown around so loosely that they're starting to lose their meaning. So I wanna address that quickly. Anti-Semitism is hostility toward or discrimination against Jews as a religious, ethnic, or racial group. So if we're hating or discriminating against or oppressing people because they're Jewish, that's anti-Semitism. It's racism against the Jewish people. And just like racism against any people group, Anti-Semitism is small-minded and ugly and wrong. It's also unchristlike. That said, we also need to admit that sometimes things are labeled racist or anti-Semitic when they're not actually racist or anti-Semitic. We have to remember what racism really is. Otherwise, we water down how wrong it is. And it's easy to tell what real racism is because it's in the name, racism. If we're hating, or discriminating against or oppressing people because of their race, that's racism. 
On the other hand, if we disagree with someone or have an argument or dislike someone for reasons other than their race, it's not racism. For example, if you argue with the cashier at the store because you think they gave you the wrong amount of change and they happen to be a different race from you, that's not racism. It's the same thing with the Jewish people. For example, let's say we disagree with a, with a policy of the government of Israel because we feel like that's bad policy. That's not anti-Semitism. Or if we get into an argument or a debate or a discussion with someone about who Jesus is and that person that we're talking to happens to be Jewish, that's not anti-Semitism. However, if we're opposing the government of Israel because we want to discriminate or limit the Jewish people, that's anti-Semitism. It's racism against the Jewish people. Think about it. Racism is negatively judging someone because of something that God gave to them, their ethnicity. No one gets to choose what their skin color is. God is the one who decided that some of us would be Jewish. Some of us would be Palestinian. Some of us would be black or white or Asian or whatever. Whatever ethnicity we are, God chose that for us. We didn't choose it for ourselves. Remember that God so loved the world, the multicolored, multi-ethnic world, that he gave his only son so that whoever, whoever of any color, of any ethnicity, of any nationality, Jew or Gentile, whoever would believe in him would not perish but have eternal life. Look, in my opinion, it's not even really about race per se. What we're dealing with is otherism, and, and racism happens to be the ethnic branch of otherism. Humanity is a fallen race. The Bible tells us this. And we fallen humans have this tendency to look negatively on any kind of other, right? We dislike people that are part of the other political party, or the other gender, or the other social class, or the other religion, or the other sexual orientation, or even the other football team. This is why the message of Jesus is so earth-shattering. I mean, it's no accident that the New Testament repeatedly teaches us to love one another. Look at all these verses. We have to separate out people from ideas. It's okay to hate and discriminate against ideas, but it's not okay to hate and discriminate against people, even people that are mean to us or that don't like us. Ideas aren't made in the image of God. People are. So it's okay to hate and discriminate against ideas, against racism, against oppression, for example, but it's not okay to hate our neighbor. That's the opposite of what Jesus taught. He calls us to a higher kind of love. Okay, let me wrap up by reading this short excerpt from the Sermon on the Mount. We're going to read from Luke 6 here. And just think about, as I read this, think about the, the humility and the love that Jesus is calling us to for our fellow man, for our fellow neighbor, regardless of their ethnicity or their skin color. Let's start at verse 27. But I say to you who hear, love your enemies, do good to those who hate you, bless those who curse you, Pray for those who abuse you. To one who strikes you on the cheek, offer the other also. And from one who takes away your cloak, do not withhold your tunic either. Give to everyone who begs from you, and from one who takes away your goods, do not demand them back. And as you wish that others would do to you, do so to them. If you love those who love you, what benefit is that to you? For even sinners love those who love them. And if you do good to those who do good to you, what benefit is that to you? For even sinners do the same. And if you lend to those from whom you expect to receive, what credit is that to you? Even sinners lend to sinners to get back the same amount. But love your enemies and do good and lend, expecting nothing in return. And your reward will be great and you will be sons of the Most High. For he is kind to the ungrateful and the evil. Be merciful, even as your Father is merciful. So how can we read these beautiful words and then turn around and unmercifully castigate someone who God happens to have made Jewish or has made Palestinian or made black or female or Asian or white? In John 13, Jesus says that the world will know who we are. They will recognize us as his disciples by our love for one another. So let's love one another. Shalom.